life and of her treatment of her children. Now, to explain further the glory of the Divine Mother, we should refer to Bhagavad Gita again. Bhagavad Gita, the most precious gem of our scriptures. One Bhagavad Gita is enough, if you understand properly, to give you liberation in life. There Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, verse number 34. So he, Lord Krishna says there, seven virtues outstanding virtues of the women. Sri Krishna is telling them. What is that? Kirtihi, Srihi, Vakcha, Narina, Smritihi, Medha, Dhritihi, Kshama. Kirtihi, Shrihi, Vak, Smriti, Medha, Dhriti, Kshama. Seven virtues. These are the most uplifting virtues of women. And these virtues, Sri Krishna refers to them as his own. I am those virtues, I am glory, grace of prosperity, speech, discretion, intelligence, courage and forgiveness among the virtues of women. Now all these seven virtues which I just now mentioned from Bhagavad Gita are well defined and exemplified in the life of Holy Mother. Nowhere you can see that. Nowhere. All these seven virtues are exemplified in Holy Mother's life. First of all, Kirti, glory. Pavitram charitam yasyaha, pavitram jivanam tatha. Pavitrata Sopinyai Tasyai Kurmo Namo Namaha. Mother is described as uh, most purified personality. To her whose life story is purified. To her whose life breaths purity, to her who is verily purity embodied, to her we offer our repeated salutations. She was born in a most humble village in Jairambati. Pure as purity itself, she grew up in that small village. She had a sweet nature and was endowed with faith, innocence and compassion for all the beings. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Advesta Sarva Bhutana Maitra Karna Yocha. Don't hate anyone, any being. <coughs> Be friendly, be compassionate. All these three were exemplified in Holy Mother's life. So, no ugly thing could affect her tranquility. 
and she was ever ready to adapt to any circumstances. If you go and see how mother lived at Nahabat, in Dakshineshwar Kaya Temple, you'll be astonished. It's, it's unbelievable to think that mother could live there. Even the cell is better. You can't stretch your leg, you can't sit properly in that small uh, area. She lived there, she cooked food for the devotees, she cooked food for Sri Ramakrishna, she took care of everybody. Is it a joke? Don't you have eyes to understand? Though the, the glory of her uh, divine divinity is just if you glance the way how she lived there should be able to make you understand. Sister Niveta once, once she wrote a letter, Oh Mother, you are full of love, <coughs> love now. This love is not a flushed and violent love like ours. Our love, that is the people who exhibit their love, ups and downs. This moment you love, next moment you hate. Why do you call it as love? It's absurd. It's not love at all. You are uh, misapplying the quality of love. So, it is not a flushed and violent love like ours. And the world's but a gentle peace that brings good to everyone and wishes ill to none. It is a golden radiance full of play. Her glory, kirti, to grasp a glimpse of her glory, let us consider one small incident which happened in our village. I am trying to tell you how our glory manifested in full measure. In Jayambadi, the woman who served as a cook, she came to her one night, at nine o'clock, night. Just to tell her that she had touched a dog. You know, according to the custom, according to prevailing custom, touching the God is considered uh, pollution. Touching a dog, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Touching a dog. According to the prevalent <coughs> situation, condition, touching the dog is considered pollution. So, <coughs> she would have to take bath in order to satisfy her mind. But it was too cold, it was winter. It's not a joke to even touch the water. Even touching the water bites your hand. She came and asked her mother, she reported, what should be done now? Mother said, straight forward, don't take bath so late in the night. Do, do one thing, wash your hands, and we change the truth. That's enough. But that poor lady, she was brought up in that old uh, superstitious uh, tradition. She protested. Oh, how can okay, that suffice? Then mother gave 
another option. All right, let me do second option. Take some Ganges water. That also was not most convincing to her. Then, third option is the final option. There is no more option. And she was looking very intently what mother would say now. Two options are discarded. And now mother said very seriously. Most seriously. And she looked at her and said, look, touch me. This opened the eyes of the cook from the uncomfortable cold bath. When she said to her to touch her, what does it mean? She meant all her impurities are taken out. All her thoughts about pollution are removed from her mind, once and for all. And she was overhanged. In fact, that gave a kind of awakening to her, that cook. What? Mother is telling to touch her? That would purify her? The way in which Holy Mother conveyed this message was so uh, impressive she was totally satisfied by that suggestion. That is the glory, kirti of mother. Kirti, outstanding virtue of the world. Outstanding. In that action, you must know that action was prompted by her tremendous love towards the suffering soul, that cook, ordinary, most ignorant woman, is suffering. She extended her love and gave her peace. <coughs> now another incident to explain the glory of the mother. Once she was engaged in her worship at the Udbodhan, there was her companion, mad aunt. Sometimes she would go berserk. She went on abusing her for no reason. Mind was cooked, you know. When the mind is up, uh, out of this place, you don't know how a person behaves. After the worship, Holy Mother looked at her and said, What a lot of persons there are who meditate and perform austerity. And yet, they can't get me. And you miss me even though you have got me. See, Mother is revealing her divinity here. Mm -hmm. At Banaras, the mad aunt cursed the mother whole night, saying, Let my sister in law go, let my sister in law die, like that. All nonsense was used. With reference to this, mother said in the morning, Poor lady, my youngest sister in law does not know that I am deathless. <laughs> so, self revelation and self concealment alternate in the unfolding of Holy Mother's life. 
from distant parts of people pour into worship her as a goddess and yet the villagers understand nothing of this to them she is ever their aunt their sister or niece and nothing more once the villager put the question to her so many come so many people come to see you from such distant lands and why can't we understand you the mother replied in a extreme simplicity <coughs> well <coughs> what does it matter if you can't you are my friends and so i am yours There was a village watchman, Ambika. She said, "People call you goddess, deity, and what not. And as for us, we understand nothing of that." The mother said, "Why need you understand? You are my brother Ambika, and I am your sister Sharma." <laughs> She kept herself informed of the will and woe of the villagers. And identified herself with this. Harassed by the tyranny of her relatives, she said one day at Jayamati, "I warn you. Don't you vex me too much. If the being that is within this body should once raise its hood, then not even Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara will have any power to save it." that is given to her she had the full power in her hand